Pfizer has a, a statement that says the patient is waiting. And I feel that every day when I come in because I know that if we can potentially get a vaccine sooner, we're hopeful that more people's lives will be saved. The first reports were that there was, uh, you know, some sporadic viral outbreaks, but they didn't think that the virus was going to be able to be spread from person to person. But then that very quickly changed. About a month into it, it became clear that this was not going to get contained and that a vaccine was really necessary here. Immediately, colleagues were trying to understand details about the disease, uh, details about the virus, and seeing if there was an opportunity that we would have to make a difference. Everyone, I think, knew that that was going to take time, but there are few other places that can undertake the kinds of things we undertake. It went to an all hands to the deck very, very quickly. Imagine the time it takes to develop a vaccine, which is upwards of 10 to 15 years from start to finish, and then condense that down because the need is now. Can you tell us a little bit about the nasogastric tube and what it's used for? They're going to have you walk through a little bit of what you're doing. Maybe you can point some things out. I'm going to get closer. This is the sample management lab. Jake's working on the shipping form to send... Sierra to Germany. Sierra to Germany. Mm -hmm. All the samples from all over the world come in, and one of the things they have to do is verify that what somebody said came in is what actually got here. A drug or a therapeutic is something that you take after you've become sick and prevents you from being any sicker than you could already have been. With our potential therapeutic that we call the protease inhibitor, we would hope to be treating very early in hospitalised patients and preventing them progressing to these very severe stages of disease. And also we have a couple of medicines that are either already on the market or in late-stage clinical testing that may benefit patients who develop the most severe forms of COVID-19 infection. A vaccine, on the other hand, is something that you take that prevents you from getting sick. So we're going to go into some biological safety area here. What we're doing right now is we're trying to understand how that spike protein is produced and how it interacts with other proteins. So we're making that protein inside of some kidney cells. That's going to allow us to produce a vaccine that's got a better stability. It's no stone left unturned, both in terms of the search for vaccines and therapeutics that can make a difference, but also acceleration options and opportunities to get the therapeutics and vaccines to patients quicker. Although we're going quickly, we're not skipping steps. So there's no question that when you're developing something fast, it does not mean that you can compromise on safety. It's beyond science. At this point, it's, it's patients' lives that are at stake at the forefront. It feels like going to war for nerds. <laughs> What we do really creates a legacy of valuable tools for humanity. There's a very strong sense of mission and contributing to the containment of COVID-19. There's a very real feeling of pride. COVID-19 is surrounding us all. It's totally changed our way of life. I think it's an honor to be able to use some of our scientific expertise and try and make a difference.